Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to the workshop. Time for another DIY video today. You know, around the holidays, it seems like we all get one of these, a tin of cookies. Maybe there'll be in a, one like this or a you know holiday theme one or whatever, but y'all end up with an empty cookie tin. And I thought to myself, I should make a banjo out of that just for fun. And then I thought to myself, I should make a video so you can make a banjo just for fun. So today we're gonna make a banjo out of a cookie tin and a plank of wood. Okay, for starters, let's talk about what you're gonna need for this project. And the first thing you're gonna need is your cookie tin, of course. Now, this particular cookie tin doesn't have to be like this. Pretty much any cookie tin will work, but definitely gonna need a cookie tin to make cookie tin banjo. The next thing you're gonna need is your plank of wood. Now, this is a piece of oak, but if you go to any of the big box stores, they typically sell these, uh, you know, oak, poplar, pine, whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna use oak today. No reason you have to use oak if you've got a different one on hand. This is a three quarter this way, one and a half this way. That's a standard size that you'll find at most, uh, you know, lumber yards and such. Then you're gonna need a few guitar parts. I've got three tuners right here. You're gonna need three tuners. And these are from CB Giddy. I'll put the link to where I bought these in the description if you wanna to try to duplicate the same thing. It doesn't really matter. If you've got three tuners laying around, you can just use those. So again, I got these from CB Giddy here. These are these wooden bridges and these are maple, but you know, um, they make a lot of different ones. Uh, again, I'll put the link in the description. There's two in a pack, but you're only gonna need one, but you need something to use as a bridge. Next thing you're gonna need is a threaded rod or a bolt. Now you can see this is a threaded rod because it doesn't have a head on it. Um, basically that's the difference between a thread rod and a bolt. Now, all you want it, you just want it to be about as wide as your piece of wood here. So this particular one is, looks like 5 16 So um, that's a, a rough size, doesn't have to be exactly that, as long as it's in that general area, it should work. And then finally, you're gonna need some guitar strings. Now this is a set that I got from CB Giddy. These are specifically for like, you know, project guitars like this, so they sell you actually three strings. Um, again, I'll put the link to that in the description, but if you've got a six pack of regular guitar strings, you can just take three strings out of it. Okay, so next, let's talk about the tools that you're gonna need. And the first thing you're gonna need is a drill and some drill bits. I would go ahead and have an assortment set of drill bits, something like this. Now I have a drill press back here. I can use that, but you can also use a hand drill. There's not really, um, you know, a reason you're tied to either one. In fact, I'll probably end up using both. The next thing you're gonna need is something to cut your wood and, um, I'm just gonna use a little handsaw like this. You could certainly use a number of power tools, but I'm just gonna use a simple little handsaw to cut it because I don't really need to make that many wood cuts. Um, I like to use a hacksaw like this to get it started because the hacksaw's got a nice straight blade. And you're probably gonna want some tools to shape your wood, sandpaper, files, rasps. I love this Shinto rasp for doing some rough shaping. Um, just a few things like that will probably help you shape it out. You're also gonna need a tape measure, and a T-square wouldn't hurt anything if you have one laying around. And then finally, you're gonna need something to cut the metal of the actual cookie tin. Now, what I have is my saber saw here and I have a metal blade in there. There's a difference between a metal blade and a wood blade, so do not use a wood blade for this, but um, a metal blade will make short work of the cookie tin. Okay, first things first, we're gonna take our plank here, we're gonna measure down 32 inches and we're gonna make a mark at 32 inches. Then we'll use our T-square to make a nice line there and that's where we're gonna cut. Trim the board here, it's now 32 inches this way. It makes it a lot easier to uh, to work with. So take your tape measure again and from this end, you're gonna measure down about four inches. If you go four and a quarter, maybe it's not gonna hurt anything, but four inches-ish and make a mark. And then again, we can take our T-square and square that mark off. Okay, so now for the fun part, for what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come around the side here we're just gonna continue that mark all the way across around both sides. And then we want to basically notch out this whole piece, but we want that to be even. So I'm gonna measure about an eighth inch on both sides and then draw a straight line this way. Okay, I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this on the camera, but I've marked here and then around the side, you can hopefully see those lines. And then I've sort of scribbled here to show this is the part that we're gonna move out. Okay, so then we should have something that looks approximately like this. So you can see we just notched that right out of there. Now, as you can probably notice, not sure how well the uh, um, camera's gonna pick that up, but it's not perfect. It's far from perfect, but that's okay because you're doing it with a handsaw. Now that's where your files and your rasp and your sandpaper come in because we're gonna go back, we're gonna smooth that out a little bit. Okay, there we go. That is looking quite a bit better. Now the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to mark the nuts. And so to do that, I'm gonna take my T-square here put it right up against the side, and then I'm gonna come back about, I don't know, maybe about a quarter of an inch 
from where this notch ends and I'm gonna make a mark right there. That is where I'm gonna put my nut. We're making some progress. Now the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna, we're gonna measure from the nut down 23 inches this way and we're gonna make a mark. Now that's not gonna be super important right now, but it will be later, so. Okay, so you can maybe just kinda see I made a mark there. Now this mark, I said I'm gonna reference later, so I'm gonna actually take a Sharpie and draw this one a little bit darker so it's easier to see later. That'll make more sense when we get a little further along. Now I realize I just freehanded that, but it's not that important that it be perfectly straight because that's gonna be a reference mark that we use. Now, one other thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna measure in about a half an inch from the butt end here, and we're gonna make a line across, and that's where we're gonna drill our holes to, to thread our strings through. Okay, so we've got our line marked at 23. We got our line marked, I'm not sure if you can see that, but about a half inch in from the end. The next thing we need to do is mark our tuner holes. First thing to look at when you take a look at any of these tuners, there's a, sort of a um, spider or a spiral gear and then a, um, a regular like uh, pinion gear. And so you want, the gear side to go towards the bridge. So you want them like this, all right? Like this, okay? So what you're gonna want is these three are gonna sort of be like this. I'm just gonna kind of hold them on here roughly, but they're gonna be something like that across your, your uh, headstock here. So first things first, I like to start with the one that's furthest forward. And what I do is I just grab a ruler here and I measure from the end to the center of the actual, um, you know, tuning rod here, tuning peg. And that is about three quarters. So I kind of hold that roughly in place. Remember this is about three quarters in. And I take my next tuner and I put it there and I give it a little bit of space so that the two plates don't hit each other. And then I measure the distance between these two. And sometimes this is, like I said, can, this can be a challenge. You kinda gotta hold everything in place. Again, you don't have to be super perfect here, but the distance between those is about one, center to center, it's about one and five sixteenths. Now that tells me how to space them this way, but how far do I space those holes in from the outside of the headstock, right? So what I do here, I just take the tuner and I can measure from the, the center there, center of the peg, to the outside of the plate. Well, I want it to be a little wider than the outside of the plate, but I don't want it to be so wide that it hits this tuning peg and prevent, or this tuning key and prevents it from moving, right? So if I look at that, that is about three eighths of an inch. I wanna measure in, remember, about three eighths of an inch. got my line, it's about three eighths of an inch in. Okay, then I just go right down and use those measurements. So we start from the end here, we go three quarters, make a mark. So now where those three cross marks are, that's where we're gonna drill our tuner holes. Okay, so hopefully you can see this line here that I made. Now what we wanna do is we wanna mark the holes where we're gonna drill for the string anchors. So we've got an inch and a half across. We need to make three marks. So that needs to be about three eighths apart. So start here at the outside, we're gonna come in three eighths. One, two, three, and we're gonna make a mark. We're gonna come in another three eighths, and that should be the halfway point at three quarters. And then we're gonna go another three eighths, and there should be another mark right there. And so now what we should have is three marks that are equally spaced. All right, so maybe you could just kind of see there when I drilled that center hole, it kind of grabbed and elongated the hole just slightly, but that's not gonna hurt anything. The point is now we have three holes through which we can feed our strings. For now, we can set the neck to the side. We're gonna focus on the tin. So this one here, remember this tin has this funky kind of depressed top. So we don't wanna use this as the sound surface. We wanna use this as the sound surface. Now that's gonna make this project a little bit more tricky because what we're gonna to wanna to do is slide the neck through here so that this becomes our sound surface. So what we need to do is cut a couple of holes for the neck to pass through here. Now the first thing we wanna do is we wanna find the approximate center line of the box, uh, the tin. 
Now, some people you go, you can go in and you can figure out the exact center line by doing a bunch of measuring. I just pretty much eyeball it. I mean, <laughs> I'm low tech guys, but here's the thing. You can pretty much eyeball it and get it close enough to where it's not really gonna make a difference, but you want some sort of center line to work off of. Voila, there's my center line. Now, again, you could measure this and get all perfect with it. I eyeballed it and then I measured the spaces here and it is very, very close. It's like within a 16th of an inch. So it's close enough. One thing I want to mention, if your, two, if your tin has a seam like this, you can just kind of see that seam there. You want to make sure that seam is not on your center line. So you can see I've got the seam over here and I've got the center line this way. We want to cut basically a hole that is about the same size as the neck on both sides so that neck can just pass right through there. And we know that our neck is three quarters by one and a half. All right, so hopefully you can see here, I have marked on both sides where I want that neck to go. All right, now the next part, and again, I did say that cutting this is probably the most tricky part of the whole thing. What I want to do is I want to cut down and across, so it's across the top edge here and then down both of the side edge, and I want to leave this bottom edge connected so I can bend that, that um, metal piece and use that to actually hold the can to the wood neck. To do that, what I'm gonna do is I am going to drill four holes and then that'll help me get my blade in there to move around. So I've drilled the holes and if you can see here, I've got two larger holes at the bottom and two smaller holes at the top on both sides. And you may also notice the larger holes are outside of the lines where the smaller holes are inside of the lines. That's not a mistake, I did that on purpose. That's gonna become more evident why I did that in just a second. But now the next thing I want to do is I want to take my metal cutting blade and I want to cut basically a line here to here and then right across the top and that's what these holes are going to help us with. And then these holes down here are going to help us bend that because when you bend metal it wants to sort of buckle so these holes are going to provide a little relief. So there you, you, maybe you can just kind of see there that I cut along the top and the sides on both sides. Now it doesn't look all that pretty because sometimes when you're cutting this cheap metal like this it tends to kind of tear a little bit. All right. But now what we want to do, and this is the reason that we drill these bigger holes, is we want to bend these outward just like that. So see that? Okay, so there we go. Look at that. Now I know I said that I could bend these outward, but after I looked at it, I decided to bend these inward like that. I think that's going to work a little better because then you don't have the sharp edge out here where you could nick it with your hand. Now, remember I said about your files, if you have any sharp edges around here, you can easily take those off with a file. Remember when I made that black line? Well, let me see if you can see this with the camera. You can see the reflection of the black line there. And so you can kind of slide the cookie tin up or down. Well, where you want this to be is about where I have it. You don't want it all the way to the middle, but you want it, you know, maybe a couple inches from the edge of the tin. Okay, you can see I've drilled two holes there. Now I'm going to go ahead and carefully remove the neck from the tin. I'm gonna set the tin aside and then I'm gonna do the finishing on the neck. So this is where if you wanted to stain it, if you wanted to varnish it, anything like that, um, you can. I said before, with this tin, um, the handling it, you know, you can easily cut yourself. Well, look at that. I managed to do that just literally taking that off. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a file and I'm gonna file off any sharp edges. Okay, so once our neck is dry, and by the way, I just love using wood oil on oak because I love the way the oak grain comes out. Okay, there you go, now we're really close. You can see the tuners are installed, and then I've screwed the, the uh, tin into the neck here. Now, I guess I forgot to mention this earlier, but it's always a good idea to have just like an assortment of general screws around when you do stuff like that because these are what they use for these two screws. Up here on the uh, headstock, the tuner plates actually come with screws that I use to put those together. So, we are ready for final assembly, which is the nut, the bridge, and the strings. Okay, we can see our banjo is really starting to look like a banjo now. We've got the strings on, and by the way, I didn't mention this, but uh, it's good to kind of put a couple strings here for string guides, because what you want to do is you want to get them going fairly straight across the nut here. So the last thing we need to do is put in our bridge. By the way, I did put the back or the top or whatever you want to call it now at this point back on. So we take our bridge here, right? We lay it down and just kind of slide it underneath all three strings. And I've got a little bit of tension on these strings. They're not super tight, but I've got a little bit of tension on them. So you can see there, all right? Then we want to slide it down to where it's about 23 inches from the nut. Okay, so now you can see the basics here. The bridge uh, sends the vibrations into the can here. The uh, threaded rod here acts as a nut to 
keep those off of the fretboard. And then of course the uh, tuners do their job to take up the tension and we now have a banjo. All right, I got her tuned up. Let's see what this baby sounds like. Not too bad. There you go, as you can hear, it sounds like a cookie tin banjo. Now, I don't have any fret lines on here and I'm just kind of using my ear, so that was fairly close, but you could go in and mark all the fret lines. So behind me, I actually have a fretting template. Some of you might have something like this. And so I could just go on there and, and mark all of these fret lines, or I could even put it on the side here and just mark the ones that I'm interested in. But I'm gonna actually show you an easier way to do it. And that is, you just kind of look at the overall length of the string here, right? And envision where halfway is, which is gonna be somewhere in here. And then just lay your finger across the string just lightly and pluck it. And then move your finger about, there we go. Hear that? Hopefully the camera's picking that up, but we get like a dead sound here. We get like a dead sound here, but here in the middle, right around here, we get that harmonic. That tells us that is the 12th fret. So I'm gonna grab a pencil here and put a mark right here. Okay, so next, look at where you think about a quarter is, which is gonna be somewhere around here, and do that again. Right there. Right there. So mark that one, and that is gonna be your fifth fret, okay? Now, Look and guess about where a third is, which see that's somewhere around here. Okay, about where a third of the scale length is, you should have another harmonic. Right there. So, mark that one. That is your seventh fret. Now, if you just were to, to use a fretting template, the ones that it tells you to mark are the third, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth and the 12th. We've already got the 12th, the seventh and the fifth. We only need to find the other two. And there are actually harmonics there, but they're a lot really light. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick this up, but so between the seventh and the 12th here, you should have a ninth fret harmonic. So if you can get it just right, right there. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. But there's a harmonic right there. So I'm gonna mark that. And then you should have a very, very, very almost indistinguishable one at the third. So that was a lot harder to find there. But I think an easier way to find the third is grab your slide, play it open, and then slide up till you find that blue note. There it is. Right about there. So. Okay, so now if you look here and hopefully the camera can see this, I've got my third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and twelfth marked. But there you go. That is how you make a cookie tin banjo. So if you like what I do on this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon.